Hi, welcome to Rebel Fem Podcast. Has your hair services gone up? Mm. Have they? They have. They have gone up substantially. There could be lots of reasons why. So if you're going to want to listen into this episode, <laughs> and we're going to be breaking it down on what it costs to give you the hair of your dreams. So if you've noticed that your hair services have gone up, it's probably because there is quite literally inflation everywhere and our industry is not going unscathed um from the cost of gloves being a ridiculous amount of 15 to 20 dollars for a box yeah for a whole box and there are a few of us that dip into this box and don't know how to recycle reuse (laughs) (laughs) well even the reusable ones but we we can get into all that in a minute yeah (laughs) to a box of foils also being 15 to 20 bucks because we don't want to use Reynolds wrap. Yeah, the Reynolds wrap. I mean, I was part of that generation, but same. It's kind of hard. It is. It's, it's like you thick. It's made for food. Get a foil cut. <laughs> Every <laughs> time you go those. to cut them, it's true. You slice the side of your fingers. That's never fun. One hundred percent true. Um, we can talk about. A bag of lightener costing $45. Is that how much it costs? Yeah. Which bag of lightener costs? Joico. Are you serious? The big boy? Yeah. No way. Yeah. It's gone up that much? Yeah. No wonder I'm fucking poor. It breaks my heart every time I go buy it and then my budget is gone. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> See, I'm like, I'm learning something right now as a salon owner. Because I, I, I do all I the even... buying for the salon. Yeah. I just give you the budgets. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. $45? Good lord. And it's things that I have to like divvy up between three color lines and one tool line. Accessory line? What would you call Framar? A, a tool. Tool? Yeah. I, I, I say it's tool. Because yeah, I mean, the bottom line is could we use cheaper stuff? Yeah, probably. But using quality products allows us to give quality work. So it's kind of like, do we skimp on these quality tools and then hey, or make you all pay for absorbent prices? No. Yeah, it's just it kind of sucks because it's 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 a little bit of a catch 22 because we want to be able to use these quality tools. But then the price needs to go up on the services, which has to be passed down to the client. Right. Because the client needs to pay for those oils and and all that shit um and the added cost of the lightener but it does it does it gets really expensive um for because i think and and this kind of stems too because like when i do those price transparency breakdowns of like how much i charge it literally triggers people a whole lot but when a hairstylist charges five hundred dollars for a hair service they do not keep $500 $500 of all of that money. They just no. don't. There's a whole lot of cost that goes into this. And this is like, if you know, you want to itemize, I mean, there's gloves, foil, um, color, color, developer, developer, the bleach, the toner, like the, the shampoo, the products. It's like the actual building itself that you are in mm-hmm. the credit card fees. I mean, the list goes on and on. This is, this is all standard shit that any business would really have. It doesn't matter what business it is. Um, but I think there's like this idea about hairdressers uh, charging too much and that we keep all of these, these profits. And I think we're, we're viewed that way because what we do is perceived to be fun. Yeah. Not, it's not a, a real job, quote unquote. Right. But this is our livelihood and this is how we, we make money to survive and pay our bills and, and all of those things. So we, we do treat it like a business and like it's something serious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the cost of most supplies um, and, and specifically in the hair industry, I mean, we haven't really seen rising cost of goods in a while. Mm-hmm. So I think for us, we've seen it substantially. I mean, our costs cost of goods has gone up like 30 to 40% in some stuff. Yeah. Like it's insane. We're like most of the rest of the inflation is somewhere between, you know, six, 12% or even 15% in some industries, but ours has gone up like stupid. Yeah. And then I think people are expecting us to keep our prices the at same bare minimum. Yeah. And it just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. I mean, um, I saw this, this, uh, hairstylist, bitching about on TikTok a while ago, but she was like kind of bitching about how a tube of color is $12 for two ounces. And while I I do think that that's expensive at the same time, I think 
if you can't afford that, there's a, there are other options. <laughs> so, you know, not all c- tubes of color cost $12. No. And just like we have inflation, that cost, the reason why there's inflation in that product is because the cost is on also, their end. Yeah. On their end has gone up and it's passed through. It's just a trickle down effect. Exactly. So their cost has to go up um, on how they sell it because there's manufacturing and distribution and a whole bunch of other shit. I mean, the fact that gas is so absorbently high right now, that shipping fee goes up. And those are all things that we pay for as hairstylists. Mm -hmm. And then that gets passed down to you, the consumer. Um, And I think that's the part that like a lot of even hairdressers don't really understand. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I was watching that that TikTok uh, of that hairstylist, she kind of got mad at me. Oh, Um, (laughs) Because she was like, inflation has gone up 12%. It's gone 6% plus 6%. And is and I was like, 6% plus 6% is not 12%. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but anyway, it's just kind of like, I, I get it. Like, we're all frustrated, right? We all got to pay more money on stuff. But it's also it has to come from an understanding of like, okay, what is our budget what can we work with what can we change and how do we shift and align with what's happening today exactly it's kind of like the pandemic oh yeah it's constantly like shifting and evolving we had to we had to we had to shift we had to pivot we had to figure out what the hell we were going to do so we sold color kits Exactly. And we just opened kind of, up our online web store. Exactly. You opened up our online web store. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I should say you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> okay, calm down over there, Moana. <laughs> or I should say Maui. Maui. <laughs> but no, really, I mean, it's it, it is expensive. So let's go back to the gloves for a second. Um, I remember so I use our, our salon actually uses all Freemar everything. And I like Freemar. I can, honestly, I like the gloves. Um, I have bought gloves that are similar to Freemar's before from another company. Uh-huh. Uh, but I just like the Freemar ones. I just, I really do. I like how they feel. I got like used to them. Yeah. I like that they're thin and that you can actually use them multiple times. Yeah. Like, and they don't stink. So are they expensive? And does that pass through cost to the client? Yeah. But it's like a tool that we use to do our job more efficiently. Same thing with the foil. Exactly. It's like the foil is like the perfect in between of not too thick, not too thin. Well, it's because they have different grades of foil. Yeah. So depending on to thick the job you're doing, you might want something different. So that's kind of why like it's more expensive. Yeah. Instead of using the Reynolds stuff from Smart and Final (laughs) and cutting that shit in half. No, thank you. Mm -mm. Hard to pass. Dude, that's like memories. Memories. Bad memories. I don't like it. It it just reminds me of when I was assisting. That's what I was going to say. It reminds me of that time when I was assisting for like three months of my life. They just make you cut foil all day long and you're like, fuck you. Yeah. And but it was like they would cut. I had to cut the top and the side, not just in half. So it had to be a very specific size. This guy was an asshole. You know what? I'm going to say his name. If you know, if you ever worked with Ray in Orange uh, at Cartel Salon. Oh, (laughs) He and you were an assistant there. He had a lot of assistants and I'm fine saying it because you know what? He's he's really old now and probably doesn't do hair anymore. No, he probably does. I Jesus. don't know. He he just was very specific and he doesn't even remember me being a, an assistant there, which is funny. Uh, a lot of other assistants I've talked to that worked with him. He says that he doesn't remember them either. So <laughs> how's I'm just putting his name out there. But a lot of hairstylists in Orange County have worked with Ray at some point or another. Like that's how big his salon is and and how successful he's been over the decades that salon's been there forever but um you know great great stylist and and guy but i hated working for him because he was just so (laughs) specific and particular and that's okay i am free to say that (laughs) so if you ever worked with with ray at cartel like let me know Tell me, tell me your experiences, what your memories are. Um, but yeah, he had like this board and it was like you had to cut the, the Reynolds. Foil. I wonder if he ever is like upgraded. I always wonder that sometimes. Like, you did know, he ever always, change? Yeah. Did he ever change? He used to do highlights like he'd put the highlights on and then he'd crumble it up in a ball. So then it'd like what inside the? it would like piss me off as a stylist. Cause I'm like, motherfucker, I like literally cut that shit so perfect for you. So, so you, you can fold can it, cr- crumple it up. Yeah, exactly. What's the point of that? I don't know. That was like his thing. He was like, like he he's like the OG of like when highlights first you first put them in foils like he you know what I mean? Like that's how long he's been doing hair. Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
So like sometimes I'd watch him and be like, dude, like is that gonna come out good? And it would look amazing. <laughs> so I said he's a great hairstylist. <laughs> but it was just be like, you know, the whole process. He was kind of like before the generation of making shit look really perfect. Mm. And then I think like in the 90s when highlights and foils really took off, people were all about like making your foils really aligned and beautiful. Like he wasn't part of that generation. That's my generation. That's why it irked me. It was like, you know, that that aesthetically does not look pleasing. Yeah. It's like the exactly you wanted to make it like look uniform and perfect. And that's how you knew if you're a good hairdresser or not. Oh, it's how clean you'd work. Yeah. Don't even get that. I know what you're going for. I know. (laughs) I know. I'm messy. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Stay quiet. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So that color cost has gone up. Um, I think I remember we were buying like three ounces a uh, tube of color for like six forty nine. Actually, mm-hmm. I remember that exact cost. So six forty nine. Now, how much is it? Like nine or ten bucks, depending yeah. on the shade. Yeah. yeah. It's expensive. It is. So like, the, like, like I said, it's gone up like somewhere between 30 to 40 percent in some cases it's just insane the amount of cost and i don't really think like hairdressers have adjusted their pricing too much Mm -mm. like literally five dollars i've seen increases or ten dollars at max and i just don't know if that's even enough to cover the cost of everything it's not because and, and, and i say it's not because i can see it from the back end after you like do all your purchasing and we do all the payroll and we do all the other stuff. It's just like, <laughs> You're like what am I left with? Like I'm left with nothing. <laughs> Literally. Sometimes I'm like, Ooh, it's also looking a little rough there. <laughs> Holy shit. Womp, womp, womp. But I, I'm especially shocked with the lightener and then developer, which is our peroxide. Um, and, and I'm only breaking this down too, because I think a lot of people who go to Sally's, or like, well, you can just buy any developer. And no, not- I think, yeah, I think that's the misconception because people go out and do their own hair and they buy this box of color for like six bucks and it yeah. has everything in it. No, it does not work that way. It's not the same. Um, not all developer is equal at mm-hmm. all. If you open up different developers, some are creamier, some are thinner, some are liquid. They're all different. And that's because they all have different conditioners and buffers um, and just shit that goes in line with whatever color it is that you're using. That's why you should use the the whole system, the whole system um, to get the best results for whatever that the brand is pitching to you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, not all developers are the same. They're just not. So yeah, mm-hmm. can you go buy some really cheap ass liquidy developer? Absolutely. Is it going to work the same? No, it's just not. It's mm-hmm. not the same. And then you're not going to you're not going to maintain the integrity of the hair. And that's the part I think as a stylist we're all struggling with because we want to continue to use these things that we know is going to keep your hair on your head long term. <laughs> But we want to keep the cost down so it's affordable too for everybody, but it's it's definitely, it's tough. And yeah, treatments have gone up too, like substantially. I mean, you know what? Let's talk about K18 though, because K18 is like the new kid on the block. Um, Olaplex has taken a, a nose dive. dive for sure. Yeah, sad. I, I just want to go on record. I love Olaplex. I think it's an amazing product. I think it's misunderstood. I think it's misunderstood too. And I think um, there's a lot of like asshole influencers out there that will shit on a brand and then why? i don't know i just kind of don't believe the the claims i just don't i i've i've been watching them and i just don't buy the the hair fallout and the breakage i just i just don't because it's been reformulated and some of the videos that i've seen of people showing their breakage it just looks like there's it's a chemical so i don't know i'm it's hard to say I'd, and i've used olaplex a lot Same. i love it I've never had any bad experiences, so I I like Olaplex. But yeah, it's we used to sell it like water here. Yeah, and, and now it's just now people not. are like me because they're scared. I like their campaign that they're doing. Um, I haven't seen it. They're so they've been getting a lot of their um, product developers or chemists, um, and then just people just t- honestly talking and giving feedback about the the product and their experiences. Oh. So I think they're trying to change the narrative of the product. Yeah. Um, but I do own stock in Olaplex because I believe in the product. Oh, you do? Yeah. But it's totally the stock sucks right now, just like all stocks. But yeah. But K18. So what I wanted to say is like Olaplex to me was like an amazing product and it hasn't gone up in price. No, it, it stayed pretty similar. Yeah. But K18 is a new kid on the block and is actually more expensive. Yeah. And this is why I'm like, 
a lot of people are full of shit because bitching about prices increased because they'll go run out and buy a $75 K18 product that's this tiny. <laughs> yeah. And again, I like K18 too. I think it's an amazing product as well. But $75 for something this big. Yeah. And I feel like, why are you complaining about me charging you $500? And it's going to last you a lot longer than this little tiny ass bottle. Just throwing that out there. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. We'll never know. <laughs> um, okay. What else, what other things have, uh, does going, like, has contributed to inflation? Your overhead? My overhead, yeah. Your booking sites? My booking sites, yep. And retail alone, like, products are constantly going up in price every year. Yep. The only thing I have to say, though, is that we are in Orange County, so our tax, sales tax has not gone up. Oh, that's true. Um, I like Orange County for that. So thank you, OC, for let's keep it that way for a while. <laughs> I don't want to be like Los Angeles with that 10%. You know, at the end of the day, I would say that if you are a client and whether you come to our salon or not, you know, if you're experiencing an increase in your services, um, it's it's everywhere. Right. Yeah. And I, I think our industry got hit the hardest, you know, because it's a it's a luxury. It's yeah. like a, it's not a necessity. And I think a lot of those yeah products have just gone up like 30, 40 percent. I, I don't know. I don't know any other industry that has the restaurant industry, the restaurant industry. So food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could see that. It's like anything service based, I would say. Oh, for sure. Anything that's like you said, like a, a luxury. Yeah. But it's you know what? As somebody that has a bunch of people in my house, I feel like it's cheaper for me to eat out than buy groceries now. <laughs> oh, 1000%. It's like, like the other day we went and bought a bunch of food items from the grocery store to like make, I don't, I don't even know what we were making. It was like 50 or $60 or maybe more than that. And we literally used everything. And I'm like, damn, this was just like one meal. I might as well have bought a whole like someone else to do the work for me to eat then I would have eaten it and we'd have been fine. It would have been the same, same cost, mm -hmm. 60 to $90 to feed my family for one fucking meal. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That's how it is for George and I too. We're like, Whoa, it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. All right. But yeah, if uh, bottom line is if you feel like you have questions about, you know, the cost of things, I think we're, I'm, I'm more than comfortable to kind of break that down for you. <laughs> Yes, you are. I just can had show to my, you my receipts. Just head to my Instagram profile. <laughs> I can bring out the long list of receipts that I have. They look like my arm or my leg sometimes. Dude. Well, let's just break it down this way real quick before we, we wrap this one up. What would you say as a stylist? How much would a, just one stylist you think spend a week? A week? Mm -hmm. Let's On see. On color, like a guesstimate. I would say anywhere from... 300 to 500 bucks, just depending on the type of color they're using mm -hmm. and the types of services that they're offer offering. I'd agree on that. I would say if they're a vivid stylist, they're probably up on the $500 mark. Yeah, because in the early 2000s, I was spending like 150 to $200 a week. Yeah. So I could just <clears> imagine <throat> that 500 sounds about right. Yeah. For sure. So yeah, it's expensive, folks. Um, but... I think that we have some really great um, things that we add value to a lot of our services here. So um, things that you can expect, even though we've had some cost increases on some of our services, um, haircuts have stayed relatively low or the same. I would say our color services have yeah. increased. And I think you're going to find that no matter where you go across the board. Um, hair extension installs are the same. Um, we haven't increased that, but um, mm -hmm. just because more of like a service per hour type of thing, but anything that's chemical based has gone up substantially. Um, but some of the things that we've, you know, incorporated to add value into what you can expect here, um, we do five minute um, treatments that are included into your service. And um, we have lots of great incentives if you decide to purchase retail from our salon that you won't really find at like an Ulta or anything like that. And then we have the loyalty program too. We have flamingos. We do. We have some flamingo points. So the flamingo points really help your bottom line. So basically the more you spend here, the more money you're going to get back. And I think we've done what we can as a business to kind of, you know, help out with our clients, keep our clients happy, but also help our business out at the same time. Like, it's just, like I said, it's a catch, catch 22. Yeah. We're not going to get around this inflation mm -hmm. shit anytime soon. So with that note, thanks for listening to Rebel Fan Podcast. And before we go, show us some love by leaving us a review on your favorite streaming platform. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, 
and also on YouTube. So hopefully you're watching this and give us a like and subscribe to our channel, please, because we're trying to grow that <laughs> bad boy. Actually, we have like over 4,000 subscribers or 5,000 now since recording when we're recording this. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I, I know. And then make sure to follow us on our Instagram page at Rebel Femme to get updates. You can also go to rebelfemme.com, book an appointment to listen to this podcast and shop all of your favorite products. Yay. Ooh. All right. Thanks for listening. You Cheers. Might-